Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Ask Amity Show. I'm Jennifer here with Cindy, and today we have a special guest with us, Mr. Jeff Prang, the LA County Assessor. Jeff, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Thank you very much. Good to be with you. Thank you for the invitation to participate in this uh, in this program. Just a couple words about the assessor. Um, LA County Assessor's Office is the largest office of its type in the United States. Uh, we are not the folks who collect taxes. We are responsible for property valuation. Uh, the tax collector is the one who's responsible for collecting the taxes. Uh, we're responsible every year for assessing the value of about two and a half million uh, real property parcels and business assessments annually. Um, its total value is about $1.9 trillion uh, in assessed value, not market value. And it generates about $19 billion. Um, property taxes are one of the, the, the primary sources of local government funding. And those $19 uh, billion in revenue go to schools, city services, county services, and special districts. Wow, that's that's huge. That's a huge amount. Um, and so yeah. I think today our purpose is to ask some frequently uh, asked questions that we generally get from our clients and the general public. And so Jeff, if you could help us answer these questions. So let's just get right into it. Um, the first one is what constitutes a change in ownership? And are there any exclusions that we can claim for reassessment? So, well, very simply, a change in ownership can mean uh, something as simple as a sale when you sell property to someone else. It might be changing the uh, ownership, such as adding or deleting somebody's name from a deed or transferring your um, property into another into another entity, such as a trust or an LLC. Anything that changes the current ownership is considered a change in ownership, but the most common is a, uh, a sale. Uh, there are exclusions that will help save money on uh, property taxes. For example, there's exclusions um, that will prevent uh, not just property taxes, but a reassessment. Uh, to that point, there's exclusions for transfers between spouses or domestic partners, parents and children, grandparents and grandchildren. Also, in uh, terms of transfers involving trusts and legal entities, although it's really important for property owners to research the requirements for an exclusion that they hope to receive in advance because a lot of these things are very, very complicated and require very specific responses. If you don't meet the, the eligibility terms precisely, that will often result in a reassessment. So just to clarify for our audience, um, a lot of our clients are coming to us to make estate plans. Um, they're setting up revocable living trusts. So, um, you know, they own the property and they're creating a trust to transfer that property into that trust. In that scenario, would that be considered a change in ownership? No, a, um, an unrevocable uh, trust would be considered a change in ownership because that's when the uh, beneficiaries of that trust gain some level of, uh, of, of, of rights and, and control. And a revocable trust is simply a set of instructions as to what's, what's, what's to occur with the property after the property owner, after the property owner dies. So that doesn't become a transfer until the, the maker of the trust uh, passes on. Okay. Okay. So the second question is... Uh... But, but if I can, let me follow up on that. It's yes. important, One of the things I always like to emphasize is, is that a trust is not an autopilot. A, just because the property is in a trust does not eliminate your obligation to take certain steps when the property owner dies. Um, this is the, the, the trust just says, here's what is to happen. Uh, the recipients of that trust are still required to take proactive action after the uh, after the property dies in order to uh, to affect the uh, the intent of that uh, of that trust. That's right, and we we always try to remind our clients of that very same fact is that um, it is a living, breathing document and needs to be revisited every so often. But the, so, the, but the confusion over trusts uh, present some of the biggest public service issues that we deal with in my uh, in my department because a lot of people just assume that that trust is autopilot and that everything that needs to be done upon the death of a property owner is being taken care of. And they end up getting a supplemental bill that they're not supposed to get <clears throat> because they didn't take the actions that they're required to. That's right. It's really important to remember that it is definitely important um, whenever you're dealing with property and changing ownership and changing, uh, putting properties into trust or when an owner passes, there are actions that need to be taken after that. 
So our second question is uh, what our clients ask us a lot is, so in the scenario where my siblings and I inherited uh, my parents' property, do we all need to claim the property as our primary residence to avoid reassessment? No, only one, um, only one of the uh, children are required to move into the property and file the homeowner's exemption for the disabled veterans exemption in order to claim that benefit. Uh, but it is important to know that somebody does have to occupy that home within 12 months and file the uh, the, the homeowner's exemption in order to be uh, eligible. It is uh, over time, if the original uh, if one child doesn't want to live there anymore, another one does, you can continue to transfer the elig eligibility to uh, uh, to a sibling as long as one lives in the home. All right, and then as a follow-up question to that, um, so if the property that is inherited is valued at over a million dollars, does it get reassessed for property tax in its entirety, or is it a, a prorated for the portion that exceeds a million? So under the new law, Proposition 19, um, you can inherit your parents' uh, home and its tax base uh, up to about a, uh, roughly a million dollars. There'll be no reassessment. If the property is worth over a million dollars, uh, we will not reassess the entire property, but we will assess that value over a million dollars at market rate. So let's say that your home is worth $2 million that you inherited, but it was uh, uh, assessed at less than a, than a million. So your first million dollars will be uh, based on your, uh, uh, more or less based on your parents' uh, rate, and then the value over a million dollars will be assessed at market rate. So you'll have a blended rate. And uh, we ha actually have a tool on our website where you can plug in those numbers and see what your new uh, tax rate will be. Okay, we'll make sure to get that that address and put it in our description for the video. Okay. All right, thank you, Jeff. Um, so that ends our first part. We'll have another part of frequently asked questions <clears throat> with Mr. Pang. And thank you for watching. Um, as always, if you like our video, please subscribe and then we'll continue to answer your questions. Uh, so feel free to leave a comment. Um, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.